Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia and today I am at home. I'm not feeling great so I had a whole plan of something I was going to film at the rink this week but I've been at home resting and so I thought this would be a great opportunity to do a Q&A. We haven't done one for a while. So I've got my laptop out and I'm going to be answering some of your questions. I thought we would focus today on questions about skate blades. A couple of months ago I posted a video, I think it was a couple months ago, I posted a video with my recommendations for uh, how to choose the best blades for you. And I had a flood of questions about blades since then, so we're going to be focusing on some of those questions. So let's get started. The first one is from the the upgraded 6558. Okay, so it says, would you, re would you recommend the quarter inch shorter blades, which is the standard blade fit to boot option at online shops, or would you rather recommend the version that's a quarter inch longer than the standard blade fit to boot option? Um, okay, so I had to think about this for a second and actually go look at my skates. So I pulled these out. What I want to say in regards to this is don't try to outsmart the people who have manufactured the blades and manufactured the boots. There's usually a recommended blade length for your boot and that's what you want to buy. So don't try to like make it harder than that if um, they're recommending a certain length blade for your boot, buy that length blade. But just so you can see here, my skate, my blade meets up with the front of my boot completely. So it's practically flush. And in the back, there's a little bit of space. There's about a quarter inch of space. So you can see that right there. Okay, maybe you can see it better there. So there's a little, about a, there, it doesn't come flush all the way at the back, whereas it does on the front. So this is my old boots. I don't wear these anymore, but um, they're still a good example. So these are the, traditional MK Gold Star Revolution blades. So they don't fit all the way to the end. But this line, this stanchion comes right under the back of my foot. So if you look at the back of my ankle line and where my heel protrudes, that ankle line goes straight, straight through to that uh, support there. So if this blade went all the way back, then that is, is starting farther back. So this ankle would, uh, so the ankle line would be out of line with the base of this blade. So th that's, that's kind of the standard you want. You want the heel to be supported and the back of the leg to be supported and if this is pulled back or pulled forward, then that weight is gonna be off a little bit for your skates. So um, I hope that answers your question, uh, but mainly go with whatever the boot manufacturer is recommending for your blade size. Okay, all right, let's move on. Okay, so this one isn't so much a question as it is a comment that I wanted to bring some attention to. So it's from G.A. Klingbergs. Um, it says, wonderful information. I've been skating with traditional MK Gold Star blades since I began skating 30 years ago. I love them. One thing to note, if you change to a different boot manufacturer, the size of your blade may change. It may take some time to get acclimated to the new blade size. Now, I wanted to bring attention to this because yes, different um, blades, different manufacturers are gonna recommend different blades. And this kind of comes to, the, uh, draws to attention the comment I answered just a moment ago about the length of blade you should order. So. A really good one to think of is the Adea boot. The Adea boot has a higher heel, and this makes the entire boot slightly shorter. And so the blade you're gonna to need to buy is gonna be shorter to match that boot. So if you are accustomed to a, you know, a, I wear Harlex, or if you're accustomed to a Jackson or a Klingbile or some other boot, and you switch to Adea, you cannot use your old blades, and you're gonna to have to switch, start using a shorter blade and that's gonna take quite a bit of time to get used to. So um, you just wanna keep that in mind that when you switch manufacturers, you probably are also gonna to have to buy a new pair of blades to match that new pair of boots. So this is from Lovely ENH. Which are better, tapered or parallel blades for a beginner? I also want them to last me a long time. Okay, so giving specific blade recommendations is difficult. 
without being able to see you and see the way you're skating and see how you're standing in your skates. But uh, parallel blades are just fine for a beginner. Generally speaking, I have no problem recommending parallel, the, the, so the, the shape of the blade, and if you're not understanding this, go back to the original video. I'll post a link down to the video these questions are based off of. I'll post that link down below. But the shape of the length of the blade, so this way, these are tapered and they're very they're very nice blades. You don't need tapered blades as a beginner. If you want to splurge and get yourself a pair of skates that are tapered, that's not a problem. They're not going to hinder your skating. But you don't need them as a beginner skater. You're going to be just fine with a pair of parallel if that is what your budget is is going to allow. Okay? So, don't be feeling bad about getting a parallel you know, blade or a more beginner blade if you're a more beginner skater. Just save up so as your skills improve, you can step up your equipment to go along with it. All right, I have another one for you. This one is from Rohan. As a beginner, I was wondering throughout the video why the more professional blades are made to do jumping, spinning, and edge work easier. Why do I have to struggle with a more bulky and flat blade through my first attempts at at the elements for the next couple of years before switching and then getting a boost in performance quality later? Or are beginner blades just more stable to learn with? That's a great question. Um, okay, you don't have to start out with a beginner blade, okay? Um, there's no one saying you have to start with a beginner blade. You can come in here for your first day of class with a MK Gold Star Revolution you know, $1,600 pair of blades, if that is what you want to do. There's no one stopping you from jumping right in to the most advanced blade. Most people want to ease in. They start going, oh, maybe I'll give it a try. They get a beginner pair of boots and blades. They decide they like it. They upgrade and they upgrade the, uh, the uh, durability and the performance value of their equipment as they upgrade their skills. But you don't have to upgrade with your skills. I would recommend you don't outboot yourself, okay? Don't get a boot like this that's just gonna be incredibly difficult to break in. So don't outboot yourself, but it's impossible to outblade yourself, okay? So you could have a beginner, uh, a Jackson L blade, okay? That's a pretty decent blade. It's not the most, uh, sorry, Jackson L boot. It's not the most advanced boot, but it's a good beginner boot that you can still break in when you aren't, don't have your skills quite as advanced yet, okay? So you could start with a Jackson L boot and get yourself a Gold Star or a John Wilson Gold Seal. You can get the top of the line blade and put it on there. So you can't outblade yourself, okay? You can outboot yourself, you cannot outblade yourself. Now, the, now there is something to be said about stability so a blade that's flatter with a smaller toe pick that's not side honed or tapered is uh, actually more easy to learn on when you're doing your very beginning skating. The toe pick isn't as huge, which means um, when you do your more advanced jumps, you're not gonna be able to find it, but as a beginner, you're not gonna trip on it as much, right? So this toe pick, when it was new, okay, it's a little worn down, but this, this pick stuck out a lot more right at the very beginning. And if you didn't know how to use those skates, you would trip on them a lot. And that could be incredibly frustrating. So the more beginner skates have a smaller toe pick. They're also not as curved through the rocker, which means you're gonna be more stable. You're not gonna be swinging up and down on that rocker. You're not gonna be wobbling forward and backward like a seesaw, okay? So yeah, you, you can buy whatever blades you want. You can go right to the top and it, it's not gonna be, um, you know, it's not gonna be a super serious problem, but if you start with a more beginner blade, you might feel a lot more safe right at the beginning of your skating. Finances, stability, those are the main two reasons people start with a beginner blade. Okay, so this is from, oh, I don't even know how to say this name. Look, Dush, mm, Duskarova, Duskarokova. Oh goodness, I'm butchering it, I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you so much for this information. They're more than useful. I'm a professional dancer and I started with figure skating six months ago. Welcome to the sport. 
I'm planning to buy new skates, boots, and blades, and now I'm working on simple jumps and rotations on one leg. My trainer suggested me MK Galaxy or Professional, but I'm thinking to buy MK Professional. I love to spin, but I'm struggling with three turns a little. Do you think this type of blades would be a good choice? Okay, again, this is someone asking me for a specific blade recommendation, and without seeing your skating, I, I can't guarantee that a recommendation I give you is gonna be perfect. So if you have a coach, or as you say, a trainer who's suggesting uh, between the, the MK Galaxy and the Professional, then you know, definitely go with one of those. I personally like the Professional better. It's a very highly rated blade. People have been using it and loving it for a long time. You can't go wrong with the MK Professional. Okay, so this next one is from Emma B. 9264 It says, hello coach, when would you recommend changing blades except for jumps? I am competing in adult ice dance, learning single jumps, aside and figure skating, and I'm currently with the Mark IV blades. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I will change my boots soon, so it will already cost a lot, and I wonder if I really need to change boots to mostly for footwork and deep edges. My coach isn't really helpful th for this, and I don't have a tech in my city. Okay, so the Mark IV blade is on Jackson's most beginner skate. Um, people usually wear a Mark IV blade in uh, like very, very beginner group classes. So where they're doing two foot glides, one foot glides, learning their crossovers, learning three turns. But once you're beyond that and you're learning those single rotation jumps, which I see you're doing, um, you need to upgrade those blades. I'm sorry. Um, the Mark IV blades are great for getting started in skating, but they're not a blade you want to stick with if you're going to be rotating all the way around. Okay, so skating unfortunately is an expensive sport. As soon as you buy equipment, you need to start putting that money aside in your piggy bank for when you have to upgrade down the road or at least replace your equipment. So yes, I would recommend if you're doing single rotation jumps, you need something a little bit nicer than a Mark IV blade. This is from Alistar KOK. -K. Says, hi Coach Julia, would you also please include a video discussing the hollow? For example, my coach recommends me a 7 16 hollow on my current blades, which are also MK Gold Star, Team Gold Star. But my previous Paramount blades had a half inch hollow and I feel like they had more bite or grip on the ice, but were harder on turns thanks for this very informative video. I'm not sure um, how you could feel that the half inch has more bite. Um, I had a whole disaster with my skates at a competition earlier this year, which you guys might have seen that video at this point, where I was in a quarter inch hollow and then a half inch hollow, and then my standard 3 eighths inch hollow. Um, and the half inch hollow felt completely flat with no bite at all. Um, if that's what you're used to, it might take some time to get adjusted to a 7 16 inch hollow, but if you're in a gold star blade, um, you're kind of dis doing a disservice to those really, really nice skates by having such a shallow hollow. And on top of that, if your coach is recommending a certain hollow, go with what your coach says, okay? I, uh, I'm a coach, but I don't know you personally. And so I love to be able to connect with you guys. I love to be able to give you my advice and encouragement here on this channel, but I don't know you and your skating. And so if you have a coach at home who is giving you advice on uh, boot recommendations, blade recommendations, skate hollow recommendations, or technique on skating skills, that coach is one-on-one -on -one with you. They are seeing your skating. They know what your, what your body weight looks like when it moves. They, they're, their job is to look at what you're doing and guide you. And so if your coach is recommending a 7 16 inch hollow, please just trust, trust that they are professional and go with that 7 16 inch hollow, okay? All right, let's do the next one. Okay, so I have a question here from, or more of a comment from YJ Choi 17 a faithful follower on this channel. They said, ah, oh, last week I switched to gold seals to treat myself for my birthday. I did do my homework and research, but I'm getting a funny feeling that I might have picked the wrong one. No, you did not pick the wrong one. Okay, so the John Wilson gold seals are an exceptional blade, and they are completely comparable to the MK gold stars. The gold seal and the gold star, they're like 
you know, frenemies. They're the same level, they're just competing companies, okay? The gold seal has a solid plate, some extremely heavy jumpers like that solid plate on the bottom. They're just very minute little technical differences between the gold seal and the gold star, but they're both a great skate. I wear the gold star, Coach Naomi at Skate Town, who you've seen on this channel before, she wears the John Wilson gold seal. They're both a great, great blade. So no, you did not go wrong with that choice, and I hope you're really enjoying that birthday gift for yourself. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. This one is from Thinking Thoughts. They say, hi, thank you for the excellent explanation. I'm currently on Jackson Freestyles with the standard Aspire XP blade. My skate tech says they don't have much of a rocker. Spins and footworks is a challenge for me. Maintaining a deep outside edge is the bane of my existence, but this is mostly a lack of skill probably. I'm currently at ISI beta gamma level. My boots are less than one year old. Skate Tech says best to just change to Ice Fly and MK combo, but it's super costly. I'm wondering if I could get the MK blade and mount to my Jacksons. Then uh, when I reach Freestyle 3-4, change the Adea boot and move to the MK blade there. Thoughts? Okay, I have so many thoughts about this. And that's why I wanted to end with this question. I have a lot of thoughts about this. So first of all, Jackson Freestyles are a great boot. Uh, if you're in beta through gamma, there, you could, you could keep using those Jackson freestyles all the way through all of your single jumps. You do not need to upgrade to a nice fly, okay? You don't. Um, people, there are people out there who will push, um, Adeas as the holy grail of skating boots, and I don't know why. I, I genuinely do not understand why. I personally do not like Adeas. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to put it out there. I am not a fan of Adeas. I know there's people who love them. Um, Coach Paolo at Skate Town, he loves them. He wears them. I do not understand this. Um, they, are, they are a higher heel, which gives you a shorter blade, which means you have less blade to work with. Um, in my experience, all of my students who have worn them, they break down very quickly, and then you have to replace them more quickly than normal. Um, I've had coworkers who've tried wearing them and absolutely hate wearing them. I put them on and I hate them. Um, I, I don't have a lot of good things to say about Adeas. And if you're someone who loves them, then that's great, good for you. But if you're in a Jackson Freestyle, which is a boot I recommend to so many of my students in person, and I would um, not necessarily encourage any of my personal students to switch from a freestyle to an ice fly okay that's if, if we talk about the people I coach in person I would never say let's switch you off of a Jackson boot to an Adea boot okay I will encourage them to get off of an Adea and onto a Jackson but not the other way around so that was what I would do with my students I teach in person also suggesting an ice fly when you're in gamma through beta, is way over booting you. You do not need an ice fly level boot when you're working on backward crossovers and three turns. Someone is trying to get a sale and they're getting a big sale because ice flies are not cheap, okay? So I hope you haven't gone and done that yet. What I would say is get an MK blade get like an MK professional blade. That's what I would start with, an MK professional, and put it on those Jackson Freestyles. That would be an amazing combo. I would love seeing my personal students in a Jackson Freestyle with an MK professional blade. I would be delighted to have my personal students in that. And if, if you wanted to take any advice without me seeing your skating, that's what I would suggest. Okay, so um, yes, stick with the current boots you have. I, they, they're good for your level and then some, and then just go with an MK professional. That would be my recommendation. I hope you found that helpful. There are so many more on here that I could be answering, but I think I could be on here for two hours answering your questions about skate blades. So I picked a few that I hope a lot of you can identify with and find interesting. 
there's a whole bunch on the difference between the standard and the revolution blade. So I think I need to do a video just on that topic. So if you ask me a question about those revolution blades, I'm gonna compile something. In fact, I'm gonna see if I can reach out to MK and get them to collaborate with me on that. So hopefully we'll have something about the difference between a standard blade and a revolution blade coming out very soon. But I hope you found these comments and answers helpful or interesting. If you did, please do give us that thumbs up. And as always, I look forward to reading all your comments in that section down below. If you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.